Hey everyone, it's Ivan with Kitbadger.com here to bring you another gun review today. I'm talking about this pistol right here, which is the HK P30. This pistol came about back in 2006 when it was first released, and there's a number of different variations. This one happens to be double action, single action. They also have one with external safeties. They have a long slide version, a compact version, a bunch of different stuff. This is kind of the vanilla double action, single action version of this pistol. As far as stats go on the pistol, dimensionally, it's about a little over seven inches long, about five and a half inches tall, and a little over 1.3 inches wide. Has metal sights on this one right here, ambidextrous, slide stop, slide release. And then right here, kind of similar to a lot of HK pistols, you have this paddle magazine release. Comes with 15 round magazines. This one happens to be a 21 round extended base plate. Also has interchangeable back straps. And back here, this being double single, we have a decock button and pick rail where right here, obviously have Surefire X300 mounted. What has been my experience with this pistol? Well, I was originally gonna go shoot, compete with it over at the Tactical Games in Georgia back in 2019. And I missed some flights, didn't do that. Consequently, silver lining, gotta go take a Amtac shooting force on force class, which was awesome, learned a ton. So initially I was gonna use the Safari Land ALS holster. Obviously it will not accept this light. And because I went to go shoot a force on force class, I did not use that holster and instead use this Filster floodlight. It basically will fit pretty much any pistol with a X300 Ultra. So I pretty much did all of my shooting with this pistol drawing out from concealment. And over the course of that class, it definitely performed. This pistol is kind, I've had very little experience, I guess, with pistols that are double action, single action. And so this gave me a lot of reps with that. And in part, Bill Rapier, Amtec shooting, Every time I'd be like, oh, I'm gonna game this some. We draw it out, he's like, nope, decock that. Every time for like up drills, whatever we were doing. So I definitely had a lot of reps going through that fairly long, but pretty consistent double action first shot. Not being used to that long double action first shot, there was definitely a learning curve. One thing that can be said for it though, is once you do have that double action first shot, you end up with a really nice, pretty light single action trigger after that, which consequently is pretty much way nicer than most striker fired pistols. Because yeah, you go back to that single action and it's not trying to defeat like internal safeties and stuff along those lines. For me, this pistol definitely performed. Like I said, the biggest thing was the learning curve as far as this getting that single action for, sh or I'm sorry, double action for shot, but it worked great. I didn't have any malfunctions or anything like that shooting through that entire course. And yeah, pistol did a good job for me. When it comes to accuracy, this pistol, it definitely shoots. It will outshoot me any day of the week. I will say one thing I don't like, these, these are, by the way, they're steel sights, they're not tritium, anything like that. You have a bright dot on the front, which personally I'm not a huge fan of. If it was a tritium vial, that's one thing, but it's not. And for me, with the rear sight, with this rear steel sight, it's kind of a big U-notch, which it's really nice up close. It allows you to pick up that front sight, break shots, again, at close distances. And so to that end, defensive use, absolutely all day long. For me personally, I find if I try and really refine that sight picture, one, the dot becomes distracting because it really does nothing for you. Like actually trying to line up the top of your front sight with your rear sight. And there's so much space in this rear notch. I find that especially at distance, it becomes more difficult than if there was less space because you're trying to, yeah, basically trying to equalize that. And for me personally, at distance, don't really care for these sights. I did do some shooting groups, which largely it's just me as the variable, 
but I'm not gonna bench this thing or anything like that. I ended up shooting a couple different five shot groups with a number of different ammunitions, starting initially shooting some Minutemen Munition, some of their training ammo, and here's what I got here. And here's my second group with that 125 grain from Minutemen Munitions. Here's what I got using some of the Sig Sauer V-Crown jacketed hollow point, 124 grain. And my second group with that same Sig ammo, not sure why I had that vertical stringing. Switching over, use some ASIM Precision, 115 grain Barnes TAC XP hollow points. and my second group with those same solid copper hollow points. I then tried some of their full stop 124 grain solid copper hollow points from G9 Bullets. And my second group with those same 124 grain solid copper hollow points. And lastly, also from G9 Bullets, I tried their 124 grain Montana Gold hollow points. And again, G9, Montana Gold, hollow points, my last group. Better shooter behind this gun, probably get better groups, but for me, I absolutely could not outshoot this gun. And with respect to realistic distances, concealed carry, stuff like that, I think it absolutely performs. Real quick, in fairness to this pistol, these sites are 10.8 sites. I believe they're aftermarket. I don't think they come stock. And I, yeah, not my favorite, but it is what it is. I did do some shooting on steel with this pistol, a reduced BC zone by TA targets, and started off at 10 yards. Really easy. Obviously, keep this thing on target, break round after round from there. Ended up moving back to the 25 definitely had to slow things down. For me, these sights definitely shoot a little bit high. You could see it on the paper some. Point of aim pretty much right here. Most everything was a little bit above that. And as I moved back, definitely had to start holding lower on that reduced BC zone. And finally, moved back to 50 yards. Again, all those fundamentals coming into play and pretty much holding like the bottom of the target to get those hits. This will shoot, really comes down to the shooter. I mean, overall, I think it's a pretty good gun. Is there an Achilles heel? Yes, there absolutely is. And I don't think I am at all unique in this. Problem I ran into repeatedly is with my grip here, thumbs pointed forward, will not lock back. So I can sit here and do this all day long. And when I go to put the slide forward, this is awesome. Ambidextrous, slide stop, slide release. It's really big, easy to manipulate, even with gloves. But, comma, you're shooting, 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 and oh look, that's weird. It didn't lock back. And so pretty much any little bit of pressure here on this, which Usually there is pressure, trying to have a good grip. And again, thumbs forward, doesn't work. It won't lock the slide back. I do not think I am at all unique in this. So I don't know, maybe the German engineers teacup this thing, in which case probably a non-issue, but yeah, like that's a thing. So much in fact that my buddy who actually borrowed this from to uh, yeah, go shoot that course, he won't carry it because it consistently will not lock back on that last round on an empty magazine or after the last round rather. And yeah, I probably maybe solve it with a Dremel, but why wouldn't HK just kind of fix that? Then you're like, oh yeah, because they're known for their customer service. Overall, I think for some people, it's probably a really good option. As I mentioned, I have a problem with this and you're like, oh, you're doing it wrong, maybe. But consistently, it will not lock back on empty magazine. That's a problem for me. If you don't have that problem, probably a good pistol for you. This does kind of a good job of bridging a gap as far as 
Look at something like a Glock 19. It works, it's concealable. Again, flush fit, 15 round magazine, no light on there. Yeah, you can conceal this pretty well. Or if you need to, you can obviously throw a X300 Ultra on there, 21 round magazine. Now we have like arguably a pretty good duty pistol, capable. Double action, single action, external safety, they make all those different ones. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of double action, single action. Really, it comes down to kind of the training side as far as getting people to be really proficient with that first long double action shot followed by that light single action follow-up shots, which can work. People make it work all the time. I'm not a big fan in part because a lot of my pistols I will introduce new shooters to and Having that inconsistent trigger pull can just make teaching people on that learning curve make it even more difficult for them. But if you like that, this is most certainly an option. Price-wise, right around 600 bucks, depending on if you end up with long slide, anything like that. This one, this configuration, as far as just double action, single action, vanilla, about 600 bucks. You can find them through places like Shooting Surplus. If you have experience with one of these, let me know how it's been for you. And let me know if this thing locks back consistently on an empty mag for you. I'm pretty sure I'm not alone on that. And yeah, tell me how it's done. And if you appreciate my content and maybe want to kind of see what's happening, what's coming up next, sneak peek at videos that haven't been listed yet, go ahead and sign up for the email list over at kitbadger.com down the bottom, name, email, once a week, I put out a sit rep with, yeah, kind of what's been going on with Kit Badger to include a link to a video that hasn't been posted yet. A little sneak preview. But as always, thanks for joining us at kitbadger.com. Look forward to seeing you next time.